Welcome from the home of the New York Mets, City Field in Queens. The show has an NL East matchup. It's the Miami Marlins going up against the New York Mets. First pitch coming at you right after the break. So, almost ready to get underway, and today's starter, Kodai Senga. There's always a bit of a learning curve for rookie pitchers. You've got to get familiar with these big league hitters, and it's more of a chess match, but I think this kid's got good stuff. And, and at the plate for Miami, Jazz Chisholm Jr. And the pitch. Clips the corner, and away we go this afternoon. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches. Now in an 0-2 hole, he's going to have to battle. Hope he gets a mistake. Kicks and deals. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. Got it by him for the K. Oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. One down, base is empty. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. No score just getting started top of the first. Got him swinging. Well, anytime you can punch out the top two guys in a lineup to start an inning, got to be feeling pretty good out there on the mound because when you think of just having a distraction, table setters on the base paths, and all of a sudden you're dealing with the number three hitter, any distraction can cause you to serve up a cookie, and instead of it being a solo shot, it's a two- or three-run homer. And a strike. Oh, this guy's so comfortable hitting with two strikes. Even a good pitch early in the at bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0 2 count. The 0 2. On the ground to third. To first, but it pulls him off the bag. We all know that that first inning can be a critical one in terms of guys settling in and the tone being set for the game. So this isn't what you're looking for on defense. Two out errors are a lot like two out walks, but maybe even worse because your pitcher did his job to get what should have been the last out of that inning. And he'll won. And that one fouled off. The rise off of first with two away. Ball one there. And down on strikes he goes. And that is that. One left for Miami. Now the Mets offense will go to work for the first time. No score. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back here at the ballpark, pitching in our game today, Trevor Rogers. Well, the key for him usually centers around his ability to command all four of his pitches. I mean, he can get by with three if one isn't working, but it becomes a little tougher to keep hitters guessing, especially when you start to get through the second and third time through the order. So we'll see how he incorporates all of his stuff into this one. And stepping in for New York, Brandon Nimmo. There's a strike. Short hop liner handled it short. Over to first. And a quick out number one. Starling Marte up to hit. Fought off foul.
The wind and the pitch. Ball, that's out. Swing and a line drive, base hit out of the center field. Pitch was on the outside, didn't go the other way with it, but still a nice job of using the big part of the field to find a hole. No way he hits it that well if he hooks around the baseball there. Grounder might be two. Cooper to second, return throw to first, got him. Double play, and that'll do it. And welcome back. All set for the start of the inning. And now for the Marlins, Gene Segura. The pitch. That's in there. All ones, the count. Next pitch downstairs, and that is ball one. Dave Lawrence assigned to work home plate in this one. Good umpire, Boog. Very fair, very consistent. Now, I did hear some feedback that he opens up the outside corner a little bit on left-handed hitters, which, you know, for me, I'd be kind of salty. So maybe something to keep an eye on and see if that factors into this one at all. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. Abasail Garcia up to the plate. And first offering is fouled off. Senga. He gets a lot of swing and miss, and he keeps the ball in the yard. Not to mention the fact, not too many hits either. That one back up the middle, and it gets through. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from, and there was just no one there to knock it down. And now, let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases. Man at first with one gone. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. And that one just misses. A ball and no strikes. And it's fouled away. Even some of the best guys in the sport are going to give up home runs from time to time, and he's an exception. Yeah, and even with those home runs, if you're throwing strikes and keeping base runners off the paths, then those home runs are solo shots. But to this point, he hasn't had to worry about it. The next offering misses, and the count's full. You look at what the elite guys do, they strike guys out, they limit walks, and they limit the ball going out of the park. At the belt and fires. And he hits a ground ball right side, boots it to first, and he beats it. Everyone's safe. So first and second with one man gone. Nick Fortes digs in now. That's in for a strike. Yeah, all you want is a guy like that. Take the ball every fifth day, go out there, hand it over to the bullpen, perhaps in the seventh inning or later. Oh, and two as he waves at that one. Two on, one out. And the pitch is outside, ball one. And the one two misses to even the count. The pitch. Cuts and misses, it's a strikeout. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically, he likes to shoot the ball the other way, but that time, a little anxious. John Birdie at the plate. First offering, misses the mark. Next pitch has popped up. Puts the squeeze on that one, and that is that. Back here in Queens, stepping in the long ball threat, Pete Alonzo. Rogers back to work. There's a swing and a drive. Chisholm raging back towards the wall. Pulls it in on the warning track. Almost a loud start to the inning on that first pitch. Man, he's going to want that one back, no doubt. This to third. Gets it to first. Already two out here in the home half of inning number two. And now here's Jeff McNeil. In the air out towards right center. Garcia on the move. That is the inning. Down in order. Back here at City Field. Well, here we go. Top of the third scoreless game. Now it's the Marlins leadoff hitter. Jazz Chisholm Jr. The pitch. 
This one chopped on the ground, but foul. You know, it's no surprise that Jazz Chisholm Jr. is good at baseball. His grandmother, Patricia Coakley, actually played shortstop for the Bahamian National Softball Team. And get this, she didn't retire until her 60th birthday. She started to play soft toss with Jazz when he was only two years old. The pitch. On the ground, right side. Fires over to first. One up, one down. Fastball groove right down the middle. Usually a lot of damage done with that pitch. A hard grounder, but he wanted to get that ball in the air. Maybe drive it into the gap. Cooper, batting with one down, takes a strike. Next offering upstairs. That one lifted to left. Bam. Moving under it. He's there. He's got it. And there's two down. Luis Arise stands in. Going one. Arise measures five feet ten inches, 25 years old, and he was born in Venezuela. Swing and a pop off in foul ground. Escobar brings it in. Set for the bottom of the third. Now the left fielder, Tommy Fan. Rogers back to work. He swings and fouls one off. The why to kick the pitch. That one ripped. Nice grab. Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to him. A switch hitter batting right. And first offering is fouled off. Rogers, a tall lefty, 215 pounds, and he's one of the few players in Major League Baseball born in New Mexico. Boog, it looks like somebody missed the. That one's in there. And yeah, the count one and two. And now the lefty. That's a laser base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Everything came together for him. Breaking ball down and in. Did a nice job at just catching out in front. I like that he didn't spin off the ball by opening up that front hip too early. Tomas Nito in the box now. No balls in a strike. Out there to center. Chisholm gets under it. Puts it away for the out. Here's Brandon Nimmo. 0 for 1 so far. On the ground to first. Cooper steps on the bag. Out with room to spare. And that's the end. New inning getting started. Jorge Soler up at the plate. The right-hander back to work. There's the strike. Well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's well above league average, and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up until this point. And there's one down. Got the pitch that he wanted just a little bit quick. Front shoulder open, backside collapsed a little bit, and the launch angle not where he needed it to be. Segura batting for the second time, and that's strike one. And now the count is even. And there's a ball. Two strikes. On the ground. Lindor handles. On the run. Throw to first. He's in there. Did a nice job getting there. Good throw, but very difficult to get anybody on that one as far as you had to go and throw. You know? Yeah, no question. Luke behind second. Pulls it down, and there's two gone. And yeah, the batter now, Brian De La Cruz. Reached on an infield single his first time. And a pop-up, right side, foul territory. Canna makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. Back here at the ballpark, John Chavi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Starling Marte. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit.
And now it's Frankie Lindor. He's 0 for 1. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Well, here's a good opportunity in this inning to get on the scoreboard after that leadoff hit and hard to order coming up right behind them. This is where they need to get going. Next offering misses. Now 2-0. This one in the air right field. Garcia under it. Hauls it in for the out. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonso. Gotta be careful with this guy. He's got power. He can untie it with one swing. It's a pitch out, nothing doing, and that's ball one. Swing and all oh, the bat went flying there. Next pitch is downstairs. Marte stands at first with one out. Roll to short could be two. Birdie toss to second, and their second double play of the day will end the fourth. Welcome back. Here's the catcher, Nick Fortes, and a pitch. And first offering is fouled off. You know, these Marlins need to bring up the quality of their bats and specifically their swings. They're trying to find ways to drive the ball with some authority, but it's just not happening for them so far. Zero extra base hits in the game, so it's been tough for them to get anything going. On the ground, right side. Tosses to first, and the leadoff man set down in their half of the fifth. And up next for Miami, John Birdie. And he takes a strike. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. Next offering is downstairs. Got him swinging. Slider got him for strike three. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Guys become defensive, and all of a sudden, for the hitter, that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is, because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. And that one hit 97 on the gun. Miami down in order. And we are still scoreless. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Here's Mark Canna. The wind of the pitch. And first offering is fouled off. Well, these Mets, as you probably noticed, haven't been shy at the plate at all. In fact, they've probably been too aggressive at times. They're swinging at more than 70% of the first pitches they've seen today, and it's just not working out for them. Throws across the diamond. One up, one down. Jeff McNeil stands in. Hit it well, but flied out to the deepest part of the outfield his first time. That's a strike. Strike one. Next pitch misses outside. One and one. Line drive, base hit right center field. Now he turns and heads for second. The throw in, and he's out, trying for two. Here's Tommy Pham. Hit in the air, right field. And that is that. Mets. And welcome back. And now it's Garrett Cooper. Senga back to work. Strike one. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. One out. 
Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. That one hit to right. Marte moves under it. Two up, two down. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. Solaire in the box with two gone. And takes a look at a called strike. pitch got him swinging for the strikeout slider got him for strike three bottom of the inning and now it's switch hitting third baseman Eduardo Escobar and that one in the air center field nice grab on the run and there's one away Tomas Nito with the plate Into center and a base hit. So the one out hit turns the lineup over. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. That's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride and load out of the way early. He stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. So the batting order turns over. Brandon Nimmo up now for the Mets. And first offering is fouled off. And he deals. And a swing and a miss there. Sometimes being lucky is a swing and miss. If he makes contact with that pitch, probably hits into a double play. That's ripped to right down the line. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's two down. Throw behind the runner. They've got him doubled off. No runs, one hit, no error. Top of inning number seven. Gene Segura at the plate here. And a pitch. That clips the corner. I really like how he's been attacking hitters early in at bats. He's thrown strikes on the first pitch to over 70% of the guys he's faced in this one. Next one misses. And the count one and two. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, that's outside. Well, this is a guy that can be frustrating for pitchers because he fouls off so many pitches and grinds out the at-bat. I'm sure there's some times where a pitcher would rather just give up a first-pitch single than have to waste six or seven pitches on one hitter. Ground ball up the middle. Tosses to first, and they get the leadoff hitter in the seventh. And at the plate for Miami, Avisail Garcia. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Breaking ball through there for a strike. Kicks and fires. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Oh, that slider down and away. It's just kind of a slow death. With two strikes, you're looking to protect. And halfway to the plate, you know you've committed, and you know you're going to have no chance of touching it. Ah, uh, the throw in time to get him, and that does it for the inning. And one, two, three, go the Marlins. And we're still not a Back here in Queens, bottom of the seventh. Here's Starling Marte. And a pitch. On the ground, right side. Sneaks through, base hit. A leadoff single, and the go-ahead run is aboard. Went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team at bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. Here's Francisco Lindor. And first offering is fouled off. Here comes a pitch. And a good eye there. Action in the pen down there. JT Shagwa, the hard-throwing righty, is up and loosening. Puck, the power lefty up as well. Line drive, caught. Dives for the bag, got him. Double play. Here's Pete Alonso. This guy with light tower power. Alonso. Hit hard on the ground, a short. Over to first, and that takes care of Alonso. And that. We go to the eighth. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Ford. Cortez.
Welcome back and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Brooks Raley. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high and it just breaks a ton. Big lefty turns, kicks, deals. Ball. And the pitch a little bit low, ball one. And here it comes. Check swing, appeal to first. And he won around just enough that time. Next offering popped in the air, right field. Marte calls it in, one away. Well, such a confidence boost for a reliever to come into the ball game and get the first hitter he faces. Just makes everything slow down a little bit, and then from there can really settle in. Next offering is in for a strike. No need to offer that pitch until you get to two strikes. It's just a low percentage of success when you want to try to go after that down and away pitch. And he'll two. Got him looking. Now two out. Well, this is no secret. That slider is going to be his go-to pitch. Everyone in the ballpark knows it. It's a massive part of his arsenal, and he'll throw it a lot, and in pretty much any count, any situation, and he's going to look to punch guys out as well. I tell you what, the effectiveness of that slider is always a big key for him. Next offering is down low. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. Swings and misses. And the count. One and two. The wind of the pitch. Way inside, gets out of the way. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Now into the ball game on defense, Garrett Hampson. He's in at shortstop. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. And now the first baseman, Mark Canna. High fly ball down the left field line. And that one gets down, fair ball. Safe at second with nobody out, and that double has the go-ahead run and score in position. Always feels amazing getting a job done when the team needs you. To so the Marlins go with a new arm, JT Shagwa. And he's had three days off since he pitched last, so expect him to be totally rested. I'm sure he's itching for this opportunity right now. Runner in scoring position, no outs. Jeff McNeil up now for the Mets, known for his late inning heroics. And first offering is fouled off. Go ahead, run in scoring position, nobody out. Hit weakly on the ground. 
safe at first as they can't make the play. They put the tag on him, throw to first, but he beat it. And now, Tommy Pham. Fly ball down the line, and it's foul. That one fouled off. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, try to stay out of a double play here. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Slider got him for strike three. Now the third baseman, Eduardo Escobar. And that one fouled off. Here comes the 1. Ground ball right side. In plenty of time to first, and that is the inning. Back here at the ballpark, now the number two hitter, Garrett Cooper. The pitch. And a swing and a miss. Wind in the pitch. Good job to fight that one off. Going two now. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Man, he got a real good pitch to hit right there with two strikes. You cannot miss that. Not a great slider at all. And I tell you what, that's where you've got to do damage. He looked like he was on time getting the bat through the zone, but he just caught air. Arise. Up to bat next. Lays off for a ball. Ball to strike. Foul ball. Next pitch has popped up. Lindor makes the grab for the second out. So up next, Jorge Soler. The entire defense, infield and outfield, shifted to the left. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. And he flips a breaking ball in there or a changeup. Either one. <laughs> Something off speed. Good arm action on it, whatever it was. The pitch stays alive. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. And good work there as he gets a one. Welcome back. Now here is Tomas Nito. Now the right hander ready to go. Still no score. Hammer could be extra bases. It's a leadoff double, and the winning run is at second base. Waste no time there. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. Winning run in scoring position now, so a clutch A-B could end this one. Back to the top of the lineup, Brandon Nimmo up now.
And there's the strike. Bounce to the right. The flip to the pitcher covering. And that is a big first out. And next for the Mets, Starling Marte. Outfield moves in, looking to cut down the winning run at the plate. Rips that one center field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. Two away. Now up to hit, Francisco Lindor. There's a strike. And I know you want to be patient as a hitter, but you got to be ready to jump on the first thing straight. And he got one right there, but let the bat on his shoulder. Line, and that's a base hit. In comes the winning run, and they will walk it off. Well, you're coming to the ninth inning. It's a tied ball game. No one really wants to play extra, so everyone's looking at how we can get this game over with in regulation. Well, they got the run they needed, put one up, and they put one in the win column. Nothing the final for Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show. Thanks for stopping by. I'm John.